While Game of Thrones had its rough patches throughout the series, it's still one of my favorite TV shows of all time. So my overall thoughts of the series will be laid out here in this video by me talking about what I like and what I dislike about each season. So starting off at the bottom, I have season 8, which I don't think is really a shocker. Now personally, I didn't think season 8 was that bad. Don't get me wrong, the season does deserve criticism, absolutely, but we should also acknowledge the good stuff as well. I feel like a lot of people fail to acknowledge the good of season 8 because it's just easier to say everything is shit. You do have people like Jeremy James saying that season 8 had its good moments, but then you have people like Ethan Klein who claim to have read all the books and seen the entire TV show, but obviously don't know what they're talking about seeing how he mixes up characters and locations. But anyways, some of the good moments for me personally were the end of Theon's arc, the death of Jaime and Cersei, the build up madness of Daenerys, the death of Jorah, and the death of Beric, the Hound vs. the Mountain, the Knighting of Brienne, Sansa becoming Lady of Winterfell, Drogon burning the Iron Throne, and the overall action and cinematography. But there's also negative aspects, such as the death of Rhaegal, the death of the Night King, the horrendous pacing, Danny forgetting about Euron's ships, Bran becoming king, a water bottle and Starbucks cup left in frame, and the dialogue was overall pretty 50-50. You know what, this whole season was pretty 50-50. The good stuff is really good, but the bad stuff is god-awful. The only episode in the entire season that was solid from beginning to end is episode 2. Every other episode had a pretty massive flaw contaminating the overall quality of the episode, so yeah, this season was pretty frustrating at times. Overall, this season was just... okay. The good and bad balance out to a pretty overall mediocre season. I think season 8 suffers the most because of its pacing issues. I think we can all agree if this season was at least 10 episodes long, it would have been much better. But D&D got lazy, so there's not much doing about that. In seventh place, I have season five. By no means a bad season like many claim. I lowered the season on the list because there are two main reasons that hinder the quality. The first reason is that out of all the seasons on the list, it felt like the least amount happened story-wise in season five. I mean, there was important content in the season, but when it came to the other seasons, I felt like I got something new every single episode. The second reason being, I lowered this season to the bottom because season five introduced us to the worst characters in the series, the Sand Snakes. I cannot stand these four. Now, Ilaria was introduced to us in season four, but she was tolerable. She was also a much better actress in that season than she was in season five. It's probably because she started being led under poor direction. She did gain her acting abilities back in season seven, but that is far from saving these characters. Every scene they're in makes me cringe, and they're just despicable characters altogether. The show has cruel villains, but these villains are either charming, intelligent, funny, or straight up badass. These four have no redeemable qualities, they're just stupid, naive, and weak. I fucking hate them. But there are good things to like about season 5, such as the introduction of the High Sparrow, Hard Home, Cersei's Walk of Atonement, the Faceless Men Assassin Guild, and the end of Stannis' plotline. Yes, I'm one of the few rare people out there that actually liked how Stannis ended. I loved this character from season 2 to season 5, and... To me, he always seemed like a tragic character, someone who's been, you know, just a victim that was consumed by religious fanaticism. He's one of my personal favorites, and he served his purpose. Season 5, not so much. The writers could have included a lot more into this season because sometimes I felt like I was watching filler. At number 6, I have Season 7. Just like Season 8, Season 7 suffers from pacing issues because D&D were too lazy to include 10 episodes in Season 7 and Season 8. So they just decided, fuck it, let's just rush all the plot lines. And this is where Game of Thrones started to become an action fantasy as opposed to a more grounded political show. For example, Season 7, Episode 6 is fucking awful. I do like the character interactions at the beginning of the episode, but other than that, it's pretty stupid. Entertaining, but the writing and pacing is horrible. There is a lot to admire about Season 7, though. The premiere for this season has a very strong start with Arya avenging Rob and Catelyn. And just like the death of Stannis, I'm also one of the few people who liked Littlefinger's death. It took an assassin, an all-seeing wizard, and his weakness, and someone who has learned from Cersei and Littlefinger himself. This season also introduced us to Euron. Well, kinda. We saw him in Season 6, but he was more mellow. In Season 7, he is fucking crazy and I love it. He instantly became one of my favorite villains as soon as he killed those uh, two Sand Snake chicks, whose names I've forgotten. Besides the two useless Sand Bitches, we actually got uh, pretty impactful deaths. My favorite being Olena Tyrell. Olena revealing to Jaime that she's the one who poisoned Joffrey was perfect. And after that, we get a pretty decent battle sequence between the uh, Lannisters and the Dothraki. It was a nice callback to Robert stating only a fool would fight the Dothraki in an open battlefield. 
I also felt like the dialogue was pretty strong this season, especially in the last episode. The interaction between Cersei and Tyrion was fantastic. Lena and Peter are arguably the best actors on the show, and they sell every scene they're in. Now, there is one major flaw I have with this season besides the pacing. Daenerys and Jon being a couple... These two have zero chemistry together. It is nowhere near as strong as Jon and Egret. It could have worked out, but again, because of the awful pacing, these two being a couple feels really forced. At number five, I have season two. Now season two is a really good season, but there are things that bug me about it. First off, season one didn't have many supernatural aspects to it, but when the show transfers over to season two, we're just smacked in the face with magic and wizards. Season one had a few moments, but season two was just overbearing. It would have been fine if they slowly transitioned into a more Harry Potter type of world, but seeing all these supernatural moments right away made me feel like I was watching a different show. Second off, Daenerys was unbearable. I could not stand how whiny and obnoxious she was. At the same time, it makes sense. She was young and naive and just a little girl who's power hungry, but it's weird. It felt like we were supposed to be rooting for her, but I wanted the Spice Merchant to win. The Spice Merchant owned her in every single conversation they had, and he was probably one of the most reasonable men who ever was or will be. Speaking of Karth, uh, there were technical issues that, if we're in Season 8, everyone would bitch, such as very modern-looking railings inside the city or the door gate just disappearing in one shot. Honestly, those are my only negatives, though. Probably Season 2's best episode is the Battle of Blackwater, the show's first gigantic battle, and probably the most realistic battle in the show. The other battles are fine. They're entertaining, but they seem a bit too Hollywoodish. This battle does have those type of moments, but they're very few and not too distracting. Season 2 also introduced Tyrion's more intelligent side. Season 1 gave us a bit of that, but his character was mostly a more comic relief type of character. And he still has comedic lines in Season 2, but the main focus is on him tricking people and outsmarting those around him. Season 2 wasn't necessarily the prime of Game of Thrones, but it was for Tyrion. At number 4 I have Season 6. People say the quality of the writing dropped after the source material stopped becoming a safety net, but personally I thought Season 6 was overall fantastic. Are there stupid moments like the sand bitches taking over Dorne? Yeah. Are there technicality issues in the Battle of the Bastards, like John's rubbery sword and floating arrow and wound? Yeah. But goddamn, this season has some of the best scenes in the show. Hodor's death remains as one of the most emotional scenes in the series. Cersei killing all of her enemies in one moment was also very satisfying. And the Baylor Seb scene overall, just the music, the acting, it's one of my favorite scenes in the entire show. Season 6 also really shows how Cersei developed a lot in terms of intelligence and character. There were also interesting subplots such as uh, the Tully castle being raided by the Lannisters and I like this subplot a lot because it did help flesh out Jaime's character. In season 5 I felt like that was lacking so they kind of brought it back in season 6. The only time season 5 focused on Jaime's character was when Marcella died in his arms and he felt more like a father before her death but that was really it. Ramsey was one of my favorite parts of Season 6 as well. I just loved how downright despicable he was and how evil he got. Though maybe he was too evil at some points because how he was acting was just downright laughable because he was so evil and he was only being evil for the sake of being evil. Though overall, Season 6 was a very good season. Not the most stable season, but when it had its moments, it had its moments. At number 3, I have Season 4. Season 4's greatest strength to me is the acting. Besides season one, season four has the best scenes of characters just sitting and talking, and that's what makes the show great for me. These characters are just intriguing by merely having conversations. These characters don't need to be riding dragons or some other over-the-top shit to intrigue us or get our interest. Season 4 does have a lot of fighting and battles and such, but it's on the same levels as the Battle of Blackwater. The Battle of Castle Black was amazing, and the battle delivered a very fitting ending for Egret and Jon. But the more interesting aspects of the season are all happening in King's Landing, such as Joffrey's death, Tyrion's trial, and the overall finale of the season. Season 4 probably has my favorite finale out of all the seasons. Tyrion killing Tywin was very satisfying, and Tywin's death, while people see as a joke, was kind of the point of his death. Well, Tywin's main goal was to basically secure his family name and reputation and legacy, but he died on the toilet. His death is supposed to be ironic. 
And season four probably had the best overall side characters in the season, such as Oberyn Martell and Carl Tanner. I really can't say anything bad about season four. It was pretty damn near perfect. At number two, I have season three. Season three is overall a really good season, but the reason why it's so high up on the list is because it has my personal favorite scene in the entire series. And I think it's pretty obvious which scene I'm talking about. To me, this was the turning point of Game of Thrones. The viewers now just wanted to see the Starks come up on top, and they did at the end. This scene pretty much set up a pretty satisfying conclusion, at least for the Starks. This scene affected the plot immensely, and was probably the most shocking moment in the entire series. Many argue it's Ned Stark's death, but it was pretty obvious considering who was playing the character. But anyways, Season 3 also has a lot of other good things to enjoy, such as Littlefinger's Chaos is a Ladder speech, this is where Littlefinger became kind of terrifying. Aiden Gillen's voice with the combination of the reveal of the body of Ross was just downright disturbing, but in a good way. Daenerys improved a lot from season two, but I feel like they set her up like that so she wasn't a Mary Sue. Ew, I didn't mean for that to rhyme. But the best transformation to me was Jaime Lannister. I mean, he started out despicable and transformed into someone that we could relate to. That scene with Jamie and Brienne in the bath together and Jamie tells a story about why he killed King Aerys is just straight up perfect. And that's probably how I would describe season three as well. It is a perfect season. And finally at number one, my absolute favorite season is season one. This is the most rewatchable season out of the entire series. There is just so much going on in the background. When you catch it, you feel good about yourself. The whole season is filled with amazing dialogue, characters, acting, and has the atmosphere of a soap opera, which many find corny, but personally, I think it's very charming. For example, Littlefinger putting his knife against Ned Stark's throat and saying, I told you not to trust me and ending the episode from there is cheesy as hell. But for whatever reason, I like stuff like that. I don't know, maybe it's just because season one is so grounded, you kind of accept scenes like that. It really fits with the setting. This season is also the funniest of the series, and none of the comedy feels out of place or modern. The actor who plays uh, Robert Baratheon, Mark Addy, adds a lot of life into this season. The character interactions are incredible. Every scene where a character is just talking about their day is intriguing. Season 1 makes you care about these characters right away, and that's very hard to do. I also really like the plot. People said it was predictable, but you know what? I still found it very fun. Honestly, I could watch this season over and over repeatedly and never get bored of it. 